Hi, I'm Philip Dutton. I'm the Associate Dean of Science, and I'm responsible for the General Science Program. I'm here to talk to you today about the uh, really your first year start, but I'm going to give you an overview of the whole program just so that you know where you're going. A couple of important notes. Uh, the first note is regarding uh, academic advising, and it is really essential that you get academic advising, not just right now when you're choosing your first year courses, but throughout your university career, it's, it's important to check in with your advisor at least once a year and just make sure you're on track towards your graduation. Uh, for uh, general science students and uh, indeed others, if they need to, uh, the email contact is scienceundergrad at uwindsor.ca. And uh, that, uh, that address is, uh, is checked by three or four people uh, to make sure that we don't miss any of your messages and we can, uh, we'll then contact you to arrange uh, a, a meeting at a time of your convenience. Uh, the uh, words open choice are also are used uh, to represent a course that fulfills any of the degree requirements. So uh, an open choice course could be from anything on campus. Uh, they may be from another faculty or uh, it may in fact also be a science course and you'll understand a little bit more of what that means as we go through. So first of all, I want to show you the uh, nasty stuff. This is the this is the calendar entry uh, for the general science program. And some of you may also be in the uh, concurrent general science and education, uh, but the calendar entry looks rather similar. And indeed the requirements for the general science part of the degree are identical. Uh, so the calendar is the thing that is the rules for how you get to your graduation. And I've got some pictures to show you that will help explain what all these words are, but I'll just briefly uh, uh, point out the five different categories here. Group A identifies really your two areas of concentration in the general science program. And so you'll see that you'll take two sets of six courses. And these can be from any of our uh, departmental areas on campus in, in the Faculty of Science. And in Part B, it has another uh, pair of courses from different departments from the first two. And you'll see that in a minute. Uh, part C, uh, there is a requirement for at least four courses at the 3000 level or above. Uh, in the Faculty of Science and also for breadth of your uh, uh, knowledge. And uh, we also require four courses from arts, language and social sciences and at least one course from each. Uh, then the final thing uh, to fulfill the 30 course requirement for the program is uh, you need eight courses from any area of study. And the, those courses have to be courses that count towards the programs in those areas. So there are some, there's an exclusion clause there uh, for some uh, courses that don't count towards major averages and those, those you cannot use in that area. So let's go, this is the hard way to look at it. Let's go and look at it a little in a little easier way. Uh, this is the general science program at a glance. And now I've broken these down into uh, uh, the three pairs of science courses in the, uh, for the first two areas, science A and B, and you notice that we've got one, two A courses, and then one, two, three, four. So there's our six first area. And then science B is the second area of study. And then if you remember on the previous slide, uh, we needed uh, two courses from the third area and that's science C here. So, Students then typically go on and do their four, three or 4,000 level courses from these two areas. So it's not 
essential that that's true, uh, but that's certainly the easiest way and the most normal way of doing it. And here's the four courses from arts, humanities, and social sciences with at least one course from arts and a one course from social sciences, humanities. It doesn't matter which one, which these two are. And then these are the, the, uh, the open courses. Uh, they can be from any area of study. The one caveat here that many students don't realize is you're only allowed to count 14 first year courses towards your degree. So you need 16 second year and above. So it is important when you're choosing the courses from any area of study uh, that you're picking appropriate levels. So this is a picture of the calendar requirements. And if we then look at this in a slightly different way, and this is how you're going to progress through year by year, uh, we can look at this typical path. And this, this slide shows you the uh, some specific courses that are, are typically taken and some general things otherwise. So um, in the general science program, because we have uh, we also have a general computer science and a general math program. Most of the students in general science are really uh, are normally concentrating on uh, biology and chemistry and biochemistry. So this is a typical picture and it's not necessarily exactly what you would be taking. Uh, and you can make changes in here if you wish again, consulting with your academic advisor. So typically students will take the, the, first, the two first biology pairs, cell biology and biological diversity. And they will also take the general chemistry uh, one and general chemistry two. So the, the top row of courses here is offered in the fall and the bottom row of courses is offered in the winter. Some of these courses are offered in other terms. Uh, but the biology and chemistry, you must take them in the fall and winter terms. The calculus uh, has more flexibility. Um, so all students in all science programs are required to take a little bit of math. Uh, and typically in the general science program and in uh, uh, the also integrative biology in the in biological sciences program, uh, students will take the differential calculus and then they will take a statistics course. So this is math 1720 is differential calculus. There's a 1760 version of that. 1760 is for students who haven't had calculus in their uh, high school. So if, if, you, if you're coming in and you only have functions and you don't have calculus, then you should take 1760. Students uh, in the winter term uh, in general science typically take the statistics for the science course uh, stats 2910. Uh, other students who are thinking of plans to go into other programs such as maybe chemistry or biochemistry uh, after as they're moving out of general science uh, might be thinking about taking uh, math 1730 the integral calculus course. Um, but again, for a typical general science student they're taking differential calculus and statistics. And, and then there's the other pair of courses that most general science students take, and indeed anybody who's interested in uh, uh, professional schools, uh, uh, because there are some aspects of these courses included in MCAT or uh, DAT exams or, or uh, PCAT exams, uh, students take physics. And there's two choices of physics courses. There's physics 1300, and this is the physics for life sciences or there's physics 1400, and this is just called introductory physics one. The difference between the two of them is the physics for life sciences is an algebra based, based physics and the physics uh, 1400 is a calculus based physics. So there'll be a little bit more uh, uh, mathematics required for physics 1400. Uh, and then students then go on in the second term to do the second pair of those courses. So either physics 1310 or physics 1410. 
And that's a fairly heavy load of science courses. So far, we're talking in the fall term, uh, biology, chemistry, calculus, and physics. And that's pretty daunting. So most students choose to take uh, a Faculty of Arts, Humanities, and Social Science course uh, as something that's not so mathematically rigorous uh, and uh, also probably doesn't have a laboratory associated with it because the biology, the chemistry, and the physics all have three-hour labs uh, every week uh, for between five and seven weeks of the term. Uh, so, uh, so that means they're actually uh, quite a substantial amount of work. So, and it, what kind of fast course? Well, this can be anything that you're interested in, really. Some students choose to make a choice based upon their uh, their planned uh, pre-professional program if they're thinking about getting into medicine or pharmacy. And so they may choose to take a, uh, a psychology course. Um, and psychology is a useful course uh, uh, for a number of reasons, that, and there are a pair of them, so they can be taken fall and winter. And uh, But those courses, uh, the social psychology aspects are also examined on uh, uh, things like the MCAT exam. So if you're thinking about the MCAT in the future, a psych course is probably a good course to take. But it could be anything. You could take introductory French if you wanted, or uh, or uh, uh, there's there's courses in a variety of areas. Some students like the like philosophy courses in there, uh, and the, certainly the critical thinking course in philosophy is a very good course. Again, if you get advising from an advisor, they can help direct you to uh, specific courses, or you can browse through the calendar and look for courses that you might be interested in. So that's a typical first year for a general science student. Biology, chemistry, and math, physics, or you can move these other options into the first year as well. You don't even have to take physics in the first year. If you want to uh, perhaps take a, a some easier courses than physics there, you could, and then move the physics if you want it later into another year. So then in the, what happens then in the second year is students take uh, second year biology courses and some second year chemistry courses. And uh, very typically uh, uh, the, the Chem 2000 here is not a real course number. The Chem 2000 just refers to second year. Um, and uh, But most students are going to take organic chemistry there. So that's actually Chem 2300. And that gives them entry to a biochemistry course uh, in the second term of second year, which then gives them entry to third year biochem courses. And a lot of students choose to do that kind of route in the general science program. And the complementary biology side of things is uh, uh, the, in the, the, after taking the first two biologies is to take uh, biology or biomedical uh, courses in the second year. And we'll often continue to take um, biology courses or biomedical sciences courses in the third year as well. So, and you'll notice if you're looking at this presentation later that the color codings are the same on this slide as they were on the previous slide so that you can see which block they all fall into. Um, and you'll notice all of these other things here. These other things may be things like uh, upper level biochemistry or upper level physics, even if you're interested in that kind of thing. So they can be anything from anywhere on campus. They don't have to be in science uh, and they can be, but they don't have to be. Uh, and uh, now just to comment about education, because uh, I think the general science concurrent students will be interested in this as well. Uh, education uh, is a rather like a sandwich program. So the progress through the general science degree is very similar uh, for the education students. The, what happens is that you finish the first two years of general science and then you take a year of education courses and you come back for the third year of your general science degree and then you take another year of education courses. So you complete both degrees, the general science and 
the Bachelor of Ed uh, in a five-year period. Uh, if you are in education, I, I strongly urge you to get advising in education on teachables, first teachables, second teachables, and also you should be learning about uh, uh, specializations uh, and, uh, and other things like that, that are really the purview of education to advise you on, uh, because it can affect some of your choices in courses as you're going through the general science degree. And I just like to end off saying we are here to help. Uh, and uh, the help can be arranged through the uh, science undergrad at uwindsor.ca, or you can contact uh, future uh, uwindsor.ca plan your program through the uh, through their website, and uh, you can gather information for planning your program for the fall semester, and indeed looking forward to the future. So thanks for your attention, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the general chemistry class because. I'm one of your instructors. Bye for now.